Police say the 157 million euro worth of cocaine that was taken when a special army unit attacked a cargo ship off the coast of Ireland is the most drugs that the state has ever seen. A lot of drugs, 2,253 kilos to be exact, were found on the Panamanian registered ship. What exactly happened? And who is responsible for such a high amount of drugs? Let's find out in today's video. The Irish Army Ranger Wing had set sail for another day at sea on September 26, 2023. They had no idea that their deeds would soon be covered by news outlets around the world. The crew of the offshore patrol ship called the soldiers down from the helicopter. They were watching the 190-meter-long cargo ship MV Matthew, which had come from Curacao. The troops bravely got on the huge cargo ship below them while the rough Irish sea tossed and turned it. They did this by using a single thin rope to hold on. They had their automatic guns with them and were ready to use them if they had to. Their goal was clear to take control of the 32-meter-wide ship and its more than two-ton load of cocaine that was hidden inside. By completing this task, they hoped to show how the jungles of Colombia were at the center of a complex web of international drug trafficking. The commandos were able to capture the cargo ship in less than 10 minutes. The ship was desperately trying to get out of Irish waters and into international waters when it learned it was being watched. Authorization was given to storm the ship. The ship that came after the MV Matthew didn't pay attention to the live warning shots fired by the naval team. The seizure shows the shockingly large scale of the cocaine trade and how Irish and British gangs work together. It also shows the danger of illegal ships that bring huge amounts of cocaine from South America to Europe. This movie will show what happened that led to this amazing story. It is another chapter in the never-ending fight between major drug cartels and law enforcement over the flow of drugs into Europe. A group of Irish, British, and European thieves are thought to be involved in the MV Matthew plot. The Del Golfo clan of Colombia is also thought to be involved. This group used to be a paramilitary group but is now the biggest cocaine supplier in the world. The seizure from the MV Matthew wasn't the only one that happened, but it was the most recent in a string of actions by police in Europe. People think that the criminal network is still working with people from the Kanahan crime group to help move goods. During Interpol's Operation Desert Light, the European super gang was broken up. This led to the arrest of 49 people in six European countries, including people who had worked with Irishman Daniel Kinahan to bring one-third of all the cocaine into Europe. People in these situations are now in jail, but it's possible that other people in their organizations will want to start up again. The network brings multiple tons of cocaine from South America into Europe on a conveyor belt. The drugs are hidden in different ways, like by shipping them with bananas or putting them in packages that look like charcoal. The group has already brought in at least two huge loads this year, likely through Sligo and Donnell, 4 million euros worth of cocaine bales washed up on the shores of Donnell. This shows that a cargo ship offshore moved a bigger shipment to a smaller ship. The story behind MV Matthew is interesting in and of itself. It used to be called MV Hanman, but new owners changed it after its most recent trip across the South China Sea. The boat was registered in Panama on August 1st to Matthew Maritime, a new company incorporated in the Marshall Islands. Matthew Maritime Inc. wants to be known as a global logistics business. On its website, the company says things like working toward a sustainable future and being committed to sustainable development. The company also says that their feat has made over 1,200 trips and deliveries. Even though Matthew Maritime isn't a world leader in the shipping business, it only has one ship, the Panamanian registered MV Matthew, which it bought six weeks ago. The website for Matthew Maritime, matthewmaritime.com, is held by a business called Tasjil in Raz Aklimer, which is a free trade zone close to Dubai. There is a registration shielding device that is used to hide the name of the person who registered the site. European law enforcement will once again be interested in the United Arab Emirates because of the paperwork that links the MV Matthew to Dubai. On August 19th, the ship left from the port of Willemstad in Curacao, a Dutch Caribbean island north of Venezuela. Its first stated target was Gdansk, Poland. When it got to European waters, though, it changed its direction and went toward Belfast. The MV Matthew sailed along the coast of Venezuela before spending an extra two weeks off the coast of Guana before getting to its final location. After going across the Atlantic, it got to the Canary Islands in the middle of September. The exact place where the load of cocaine was found is still unknown but it's possible that it was moved from another ship to the MV Matthew. 
The ship continued its journey along the coast of Portugal, going into the Bay of Biscay and the Celtic Sea. Around September 23rd, it finally reached Irish waters, where it was stopped by Irish officials. The ship went up the Irish Sea with the goal of getting to Belfast on Saturday. It ran into trouble, though, when it met up with Castle Moor, a small fishing troller that had been bought the night before in Castletown Beer in Cork. The troller's tracker had been turned off between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m., which was a strange sign. The Castle Moor ran aground off of Wexford, leaving the troller stuck on a sandbank. This was the point where the plan fell apart. At the same time, the MV Matthew told the authorities that it was going to Cork to get its engine fixed. On Monday night, it asked a Coast Guard chopper for help, saying that its captain had a heart attack and needed to be taken to a hospital. The ship's captain, an Iranian man called Sohail Jelveh, who was 51 years old, was found to be carrying a bag with five 3000 euros in it. The ship was finally picked up off of Ballet Cotton in East Cork last Tuesday and taken to the harbor. The police found 2,223 kilograms of pure, raw cocaine wrapped in black plastic inside a lifeboat. A top Irish Garda officer did not rule out the idea that the Cahan group was involved in the plan. They admitted that local crooks are often involved with big packages going through Ireland. But it's important to remember that there are other Irish gangs with ties to South America. The MV Matthew seizure was important, not just because of how big it was, but also because it revealed a world network of criminals. The cocaine came from the Clan del Golfo, which is the biggest drug gang in South America right now. The cartel's business is easy. They sell cocaine to crime groups in Europe which pool their money to buy a lot of it. There is no need for the cartel to arrange shipping because they only deal with a buyer's agent. When cocaine is sold, it is the buyer's duty to take care of it. The low price of the item doesn't require anyone to share responsibility for making sure it gets delivered safely. For example, it's likely that the cargo found on the MV Matthew was bought for around 62 million. This small amount is nothing compared to the huge gains that could be made. There are different amounts of cocaine that the gang sells, so the price of a kilo can be anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000. A kilo is worth 70,000 euros when sold to traders in Dublin and London. The value goes up by at least a third, though, when cocaine is mixed with other drugs to make it bigger. The Want Matthews huge load, worth an incredible 157 million euro, was connected to the Kinahan cartel and its members who live freely in Dubai. The Colombian Security Services gave information to the Drug Enforcement Administration, which was then sent to Irish police. It showed that the Kinahan organization helped put together the shipment and planned to oversee the sale of a large portion of it through a contact in Scotland, who is currently being investigated by the National Crime Agency. People who are familiar with Kinahan's work can easily spot the signs that they are involved. In July, Matthew Maritime Inc. was formed with an address at Majuro MH, 96960 on Edel Tech in the Marshall Islands. This company owns the MV Matthew. A number of companies with addresses that are similar to this one have been sanctioned by the U.S. for moving oil for Iran and Venezuela and laundering money for Hezbollah. With these and other pieces of information, the Maritime Analysis and Operations Center, a global drugs agency based in Lisbon, learned about the ship. The officials will have to come to a decision about two things, the ship itself and the people who are on board. Besides Captain JVE, other members of the lead team have also been to court. Mihailo Gavrik and Vitaly Vlasoy, two Ukrainians, Saeed Hassani, an Iranian, and Kumali Ozgin, a Dutch citizen, were brought to the Mo District Court under heavy guard. The drugs that were found have been charged against all of them. The last 25 crew members of the MV Matthews are being questioned by investigators right now. So far, none of them have been caught. Through these conversations, we can learn more about whether the MV Matthews was bought specifically to smuggle cocaine or whether the drugs were hidden on board without the owners or crew knowing. Also, the officials are getting ready to speed up the sale of the ship in case the owners don't come forward. This is to avoid having to pay for berthing and upkeep. Because the ship is so big, if it got broken down, it would be dangerous for the people in the area. Because of this, it is very important to take care of the ship while plans are being made to buy sell or recover it. In case the owners don't come forward, the government plans to sell the boat as soon as possible to avoid having to pay for unnecessary repairs. 
There have been times when the Irish government lost a lot of money because of the costs of berthing fees and ship repairs after they were taken over. When the MV Shingle was detained at Draw Port in County Ley in June 2014, it left behind huge bills that cost the country 13 million euros in the end. The revenue commissioners had planned to sell the ship at auction, but they had to wait until the three-year court case was over before they could do so. It is very important for the Irish government to keep up a good story about what happened. The fact that the drug shipment was caught shows how well the Irish government is doing at stopping illegal actions in their country. On the other hand, it's a stark reminder of how much they depend on foreign police to fight transnational crime groups. This wasn't the only recent smuggling attempt. A Royal Navy warship sank a speedboat carrying drug smugglers and took drugs worth 60 million pounds. This was a double blow to drug runners in the Caribbean. The warship HMS Dauntless from Portsmouth found more than 200 million pounds worth of drugs that were illegal after chasing down a 35-foot powerboat. During a normal check for drugs in the Caribbean Sea, Dauntless sent out her Wildcat chopper and a Royal Marine sniper team to get closer to the suspect boat. When the smugglers started to throw away their illegal goods, the commando shooters shot out their engines, stopping the boat in its tracks. That made it possible for the U.S. Coast Guard to send a team from Dauntless to find and seize 11 big bales of cocaine that weighed 330 kilograms. Captain Ben Dorrington, who is in charge of HMS Dauntless, said, With another win under our belts, I couldn't ask for more from my team. Their work ethic and attention to detail are still the best, and it shows in operations like the ones they've been doing lately. He also said, The ship's company has once again shown how strong they are by being able to adapt very well to the constantly changing environment we work in. Before, during the same patrol but a different operation, accused drug traffickers got out of their speedboat as Dauntless got closer. U.S. Marine Patrol aircraft helped Dauntless get to the right spot, where she sent a detachment of the U.S. Coast Guard to board and search the boat. However, the crew of the small speedboat sabotaged the search, turning it into a rescue mission. Two people were saved when their claimed smuggling plan failed, their cargo was lost, and their boat sank. They were taken aboard HMS Dauntless and given medical care, food, and water before being transferred to a U.S. Navy ship the next day. For operational reasons, one of Dauntless's officers who did not want to be named said, The safety of everyone involved is paramount, including the safety of the people suspected of transporting illegal goods. Because of this, it was very important that we stop the boarding operation so that we could save the two people on the small boat and keep their safety and lives from being in danger. In May, Dauntless was sent to the Caribbean to help the British overseas territories during storm season and to join the fight against drug smuggling around the world. In this role, Dauntless works closely with U.S. officials. It brings on board a U.S. Coast Guard Tactical Law Enforcement Team, which is a law enforcement detachment with the power to board and search suspicious ships. The ship. Dauntless has a lot of powerful sensors and radars. It also has a Wildcat helicopter and a Royal Marines sniper team from 42 Commando that help with surveillance, reconnaissance, and boarding missions that are often difficult and dangerous. During the summer, this joint Dauntless team caught a drug runner with 1,230 kilograms of drugs. The bust was worth 140 million pounds. Later, the ship tracked a suspicious plane coming from Venezuela and told ground troops, who then seized an additional 550 kilograms of cocaine. This added to their haul and showed that they could work well with U.S. authorities. There are extreme amounts of drug gangs infiltrating shipping supply lines, according to a top executive in the industry. This came as the European Commission announced plans to stop illegal drugs from flooding into Europe's ports. Recently, there have been a lot more shipments of cocaine to the EU. Drug trafficking groups are in charge of the drugs going through global shipping lines. An all-time high of 303 tons were seized in 2021, according to the most recent data from EMCDA, the EU's drugs monitoring body. This means that shipping companies have to deal with some of the most dangerous people in the world. It's pretty crazy that these people are getting into the whole supply chain, not just the shipping or port side, said Keith Svensson, CEO of APM Terminals, a part of the Danish shipping company Maersk. 
The European Commission suggested creating a European Ports Alliance to help European ports, governments, and private companies work together better. Setting up common risk criteria and objectives for customs controls at the EU level is one idea. From 2024 on, 200 million euros will be used to pay for tools that will scan containers. The Commission will also ask member states to follow the security rules that are already in place for ports. For example, they will want ports and shipping companies to be able to screen and vet their employees to avoid corruption by criminal networks. Customs officials say that Antwerp, a port city in Belgium, is the biggest place in Europe where cocaine is trafficked. In 2022, 110 tons of cocaine were found there. By 2028, Antwerp wants to scan all high-risk containers coming from Latin America. Right now, they only scan about 2% of the goods that come through the port. About 5% of those are being checked right now. There is more and more pressure on the shipping industry to crack down on the drug trade. This could affect the business operations of container companies, which move millions of steel boxes every week. Claudio Bozzo, the chief operating officer of MSC, said that making containers open for customs inspections has costs. Svensson wouldn't say how much it costs for Maersk to have more checks done, but he did say that the impact on the supply chain is the same across the companies. He said, more problem solving needs to be done before Antwerp can reach its goal of 100%. Instead, he said, there should be more checks on exports in Latin America. To show this, he mentioned that APM terminals had invested Euro 1 BN in a container center it runs in Moen, Costa Rica. But Svensson said that his duty of care to his staff was more important to him than the costs. Svensson said, There have been times when we have had infiltration where employees were forced to help drug gangs. In July, eight tons of cocaine, worth 600 million euros, was found on a Meyersk ship in Rotterdam Harbor. This was the biggest cocaine arrest in the Netherlands. Svensson said Meyersk wasn't in charge of the drugs that were in its ships. What went wrong is that drug traffickers from other countries are using legal infrastructure to move their goods by hacking into supply chains. The Commission wouldn't say anything about the leaked paper because it could still change before it comes out. Experts say that stricter customs controls have effects on the global shipping business, even though there is more political agreement to deal with the issue. Richard Nalon, a shipping lawyer at HFW, said that ship owners did not always have the power to open and check containers. Shipping is important for doing business across borders. It's hard to say no to foreign trade because of the risk of drug smuggling. Let's talk about high-stakes cash captures and rough police work. The $250 million found in Mexico and the money found in the walls in Miami, which are both amazing finds. As the events happen, you'll see how hard people are trying to get justice and how drugs and money are being laundered across the whole continent. Get ready for the secrets of these money busts. Number 11. Edmonton Cash Seizure this cash seizure in March 2014 was like a real-life detective story, full of surprises and sneaky business. The police were on a mission to stop people who were up to no good, especially those involved in drug trafficking. They did a bunch of raids, kind of like secret missions, to catch these folks. And guess what? One of those raids turned out to be a jackpot, but not the kind you'd find in a casino. Nope, they discovered something even more valuable, over $800,000 in cash. That's a whole lot of money, enough to make anyone's eyes pop. But here's the twist that makes this story even more intriguing. Most of that money was used to help people who had been hurt by the crimes. You see, when people do bad stuff, it doesn't just affect them, it often hurts others too. It's like throwing a stone into a calm pond, it creates ripples. So the police wanted to make sure that this money, which might have come from not-so-nice activities like drug trafficking, would be used to make things right. They called it compensating the victims. It's like saying, we found this money, and we're going to use it to help the people who got hurt because of the bad stuff. The police had a hunch that this money was connected to illegal activities, like selling drugs, and they didn't want that money to just disappear or be used for more bad stuff. Instead, they wanted to turn it into something good. It was a way to help people who might have been in a tough spot because of those crimes. So, in this real-life detective story, the police were the heroes who made sure that the money that once played a part in not-so-nice actions was going to be used to make things right and help those who needed it most. They turned a surprising discovery into a positive force for good. Number 10. 
Baldwin Cash Seizure. Picture this. It's just an ordinary day in Baldwin, Alabama. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and cars are zooming along the road. But then, out of the blue, something extraordinary happens. It's like a scene from a thrilling movie. Now the police didn't just randomly pick a truck to inspect. They had a good reason. They decided to do a routine inspection. As the police were checking the truck, they stumbled upon something that made their eyes open wide with surprise. Can you guess what it was? It was bags, and not just a few. There were heaps of bags, and they were filled with money. And not just any money, it was over $1.5 million in cash. That's like discovering a hidden treasure right there on the road. Now here's where the story takes a twist. The driver of the truck, the person responsible for steering that big rig, was probably just as shocked as the police. He claimed that he had absolutely no clue about the money. Can you believe it? He said he had no idea that all that cash was tucked away in his truck. It's kind of like someone sneaking cookies into your backpack without you knowing. The police had to figure out if the driver was telling the truth or not. They had to ask lots of questions, search for clues, and be absolutely certain they got to the bottom of things. You see, they didn't want to take someone's money if they weren't connected to any not-so-nice stuff. Number 9. Canadian Cash Seizure In 2012, something big happened up in Canada, and it's like a page right out of an action movie. The authorities there seized more than $2.6 million in cash. That's a jaw-dropping pile of money. Just think of all the cool stuff you could get with that. Now you're probably wondering, why did they take all that money? Well, hold on to your hat because this is where the story takes an exciting turn. The authorities believed that this money didn't come from something nice and friendly, but from the world of illegal drug trading. It's the kind of stuff you might see in action-packed movies or on TV. Canadian gangs were part of this whole operation. But the most weird part is that the money trail led all the way to the Gambino family in New York, USA. Let's break it down like a puzzle. Canadian gangs were up to no good, selling illegal stuff, and making money from it. But they weren't just stashing that money under their beds. No, they were sending some of it to the Gambino family in New York. It's like a chain of people involved in not-so-nice activities, passing the money along. But here's where the heroes come in. The authorities weren't going to let all this sneaky business continue. They stepped in like real-life heroes, just like the ones you see in the movies. They seized that money to make sure it couldn't be used for more not-so-nice stuff. Now, this Canadian cash seizure is just one piece of a much larger puzzle. The authorities had a big goal in mind. They wanted to put a stop to the illegal drug trade and all the trouble it causes. It's like they were saying, enough is enough. We're going to stop all this bad stuff. Number 8. Australian Cash Seizure In 2013, Australia was at the center of an international criminal investigation, and it's a story worth telling. The authorities were on a mission to stop some really sneaky folks. They were after two groups of bad people. The first group was Italian money laundering gangs. These folks were experts at making illegal money seem legal. The second group was local drug gangs, the kind that dealt with all sorts of not-so-nice stuff like drugs and making money from it. The authorities knew they had to put a stop to these groups. The cool thing is, the Australian authorities joined forces with federal police, kind of like different teams coming together to solve a big problem. They worked together for a whole year, just like a long and exciting adventure. Their mission was to track the money used by these groups. They wanted to follow the money trail, a bit like breadcrumbs leading to a secret hideout. And guess what? They succeeded. In the end, they made a lot of arrests, kind of like catching all the bad guys in an action movie. They even managed to dismantle one of the biggest drug labs in Victoria, which is one of Australia's states. And the most exciting part? They seized over 5.7 million Australian dollars, which is a lot of money. The Australian authorities and federal police were on a mission to stop all these activities and put an end to the sneaky business, even after the bust. This was all part of a big international operation to stop Italian money laundering gangs and local drug gangs. But the authorities came together like heroes in a movie and made sure the money from these bad activities wouldn't be used for more evil stuff. Number 7. Atlanta Cash Seizure In this thrilling tale, the stage is set in Atlanta, and what unfolded is like something out of a suspenseful movie. Three individuals found themselves in hot water as they were arrested and faced charges for federal crimes. It's like when the good guys in the movies finally catch the bad guys, but that's not all. The authorities also stumbled upon an astonishing $7 million in cash. Yes, you heard it right, $7 million. Just imagine what you could do with that much money. It's enough to make anyone's jaw drop in amazement. What adds a layer of intrigue to this story is how it connects to previous cash seizures. Do you remember the $5.7 million cash seizure in Australia that we talked about earlier? 
Well, it's all part of a much larger puzzle, and the authorities are the puzzle solvers. You see, they weren't just chasing after money for no reason. They were like detectives, putting the pieces together to uncover a much broader mystery. In this case, the $7 million seized in Atlanta had ties to the $5 million they had seized before. It was also connected to another $4 million seized near Atlanta just a few weeks earlier. It's like they were following a trail, and they were determined to get to the bottom of it. The significance of this Atlanta cash seizure goes beyond the enormous piles of money. It shows us just how far-reaching these not-so-nice activities can be. Drug money, illegal trades, they all leave a trail, like a trail of breadcrumbs leading to a hidden treasure. And the heroes in Atlanta were determined to stop it in its tracks. So, in a way, this Atlanta cash seizure was like a crucial piece of a giant puzzle. It revealed that these activities are often connected, and the authorities are on a mission to bring it all to a halt. They're the real-life guardians of justice, making sure that the money from bad deeds doesn't keep flowing and causing more trouble. It's a thrilling story of justice in action. Number 6. Contra Costa, California Cash Seizure In January 2014, the authorities in Contra Costa, California, pulled off what could only be described as a massive money bust. They seized over $18 million in cash, and that's an enormous amount of money. It's like winning the lottery, but this money had a shadowy past. What makes this story even more fascinating is the background to this incredible seizure. It wasn't just a random discovery. It was the result of a meticulous two-year investigation. The authorities, like super detectives, spent two whole years piecing together a complex puzzle. They were determined to put an end to the illegal activities connected to this huge sum of cash. The money seized in Contra Costa was believed to have a dark origin. It was suspected to come from illegal activities like the trade of methamphetamine and cocaine. The authorities were on a mission to unravel the mystery of where this money came from. The investigation led to several arrests, like in the movies where the heroes catch the bad guys. Now, this massive cash seizure isn't just about the money. It's a piece of a much larger puzzle. The authorities aimed to put a stop to the illegal drug trade, which could ruin lives and communities. They wanted to make sure that the money gained from these illegal activities wasn't used for more harm. Number 5. Australian Seizure of $40 Million The Australian Crime Commission had a major victory in its war against organized crime in 2022. Think of them as real-life heroes in the battle against illegal activities. They embarked on an international criminal investigation and the outcome was astounding. The focus of this operation was to track down the money laundering schemes used by criminal gangs. The authorities were determined to stop this sneaky business. But that's not all. The Australian authorities weren't just after the money. They had a broader goal in mind. They wanted to put an end to the illegal drug trade, which can cause a lot of harm. They were on a mission to dismantle drug labs, where the not-so-nice stuff was being cooked up. It's like taking apart the bad guys' secret hideouts. In this year-long operation, they carefully tracked the money laundering techniques used by criminal gangs, and their hard work paid off. They managed to seize over $40 million. Yes, you read that right. It's an enormous sum of money and a significant blow to organized crime. The Australian authorities made many arrests during this operation, including bosses, freight haulers, and dock workers. This extraordinary cash seizure in Australia was more than just a victory. It was a message. The authorities were saying, we won't let organized crime go on. We're going to fight it with everything we've got. It's a story of determination, teamwork, and justice in action. Number 4. Colombian Cash Seizure In January 2007, Colombian police accomplished something extraordinary. They seized an astonishing amount of money, at least $50 million. At that time, it was believed to be the largest sum of money ever seized by a law enforcement organization anywhere in the world. This operation wasn't just a Colombian effort. It involved the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. The story behind this colossal seizure is fascinating. It all began with a tip from a source working closely with the DEA. This source provided valuable information, and the DEA passed it on to the Colombian authorities. The tip-off was like the first puzzle piece in a much larger picture. The Colombian police then took action. They carried out raids based on the information they received from the DEA's source. These raids were similar to carefully planned operations you might see in a spy movie, with a lot at stake. During one of these raids, the Colombian police discovered the incredible sum of money. It was concealed inside a house in a false cabinet. The people behind this money and the activities it was connected to had gone to great lengths to keep it hidden. But justice prevailed, and the money was seized, 
This cash seizure was more than just a significant accomplishment. It showcased the power of international cooperation in the fight against illegal activities. It demonstrated that when countries work together and share crucial information, they can achieve remarkable results. It was a message to those involved in illegal activities that they couldn't hide forever. Number 3. Australian $150 million seizure in Australia the authorities embarked on another awesome mission of epic proportions in 2016. They were determined to bring down a massive ecstasy operation that was flooding the country with illegal pills. But here's the fascinating part. This operation wasn't a quick, one-time bust. It took an entire year. The authorities were like patient detectives, carefully watching, collecting evidence, and planning their moves. What's more, the money and the ecstasy pills weren't just lying around in some obvious hiding place. No, the criminals behind this operation were incredibly cunning. They had stashed this enormous amount of cash and pills in a most unexpected location. The money was found in 3,000 Italian tomato cans. Yes, you heard that right, tomato cans. The operation wasn't just about seizing money and drugs. It was about catching the people behind it. It involved numerous arrests, including the big bosses, freight haulers, and even dock workers. This incredible seizure sent a strong message to those involved in illegal drug trade and the distribution of dangerous substances. It showed that the authorities were willing to go to great lengths to protect the safety and well-being of their citizens. This $150 million cash and 4.4 tons of ecstasy pill seizure in Australia wasn't just a victory. It was a testament to the relentless pursuit of justice. The authorities were saying, we won't let these dangerous substances flood our streets and we won't allow illegal activities to thrive. Number 2. Mexican $205 million seizure In March 2007, the border between the United States and Mexico saw one of the most significant cash seizures in history, and the story behind it is nothing short of incredible. The border region between Mexico and the United States is no stranger to the illegal narcotics trade. It's a place where illegal activities, like drug trafficking, have been a significant issue for years. The vast sums of money involved in this trade are mind-boggling, and it's like a hidden world of secret deals and danger. What's even more fascinating is that the illegal narcotics trade extends far beyond the borders of Mexico. It's an international web of not-so-nice activities that touches places like Asia and the United States. The $205 million seized in this operation showcased the global reach of these activities. The Drug Enforcement Administration from the United States played a vital role in this operation. The DEA is like the ultimate crime fighter when it comes to battling illegal drug trade and related activities. They work tirelessly to bring down criminal networks and make the world a safer place. The story behind this seizure is a bit like something from a spy movie. The DEA had been working on a long investigation that began in December 2006. They seized a staggering 20 tons of pseudoephedrine, a cold medicine used to make methamphetamine. This led to a further investigation where they uncovered the mind-blowing amount of cash. But here's the twist. Two of the individuals arrested in connection with this cash seizure were from China. It's like a web of international connections where people from different parts of the world are involved in bad activities. This highlighted the scale of the illegal narcotics trade that stretches across borders and oceans. This Mexican cash seizure wasn't just a massive operation, it was a bold statement. It showed that law enforcement agencies were willing to go to great lengths to dismantle these illegal networks, no matter how far they reached. Number 1. Miami City Money Seizure Miami, a city known for its vibrant culture and stunning beaches, has also had its share of not-so-nice activities, including the illegal drug trade. But sometimes, even in the most unexpected places, the forces of justice prevail. Picture the scene, a sunny day in Miami, palm trees swaying in the breeze, when a routine drug bust took an astonishing turn. As law enforcement officers executed a search warrant on a seemingly ordinary house, they uncovered a hidden treasure trove that no one could have predicted. It was buckets of money stashed within the walls. The sheer magnitude of the discovery left everyone involved in awe. The money was neatly concealed within the walls of the home, as though it were a well-guarded secret. The buckets were filled to the brim with cash, creating a scene reminiscent of a Hollywood crime drama. As the bundles of bills were revealed, the sheer volume was staggering, and it was clear that this was no ordinary drug operation. What made this discovery even more remarkable was the connection to the illegal drug trade. It's as if the money hidden within the walls was the lifeblood of the operation funding the distribution of illicit substances that had a far-reaching impact. 
This find was a testament to the relentless determination of law enforcement officers to combat the drug trade. It was a clear message that illegal activities would not go unchecked, even when hidden in the most unexpected places. The Miami Money in the Walls discovery serves as a reminder that the pursuit of justice can lead to astonishing revelations. It's a story of how, in the heart of a city known for its glamour, the heroes in uniform were unearthing a hidden underworld of crime and cash. Miami may be a city of sun and surf, but it's also a place where justice shines a light into the darkest corners.